And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and of course our first impressions of the latest games are releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino, and today we're talking about Tales of Arise. This is the newest in a long, long run of action kind of JRPGs. It's developed by Bandai Namco Studios with a bunch of series veterans behind it, and the intent behind this game was apparently to kind of reinvigorate the franchise. The word soft reboot had been thrown around. And now there are a lot of these Tales games, and this one is no different in that it's pretty special. It's a really fun and interesting game. We've been playing a review copy of the game for well over a week now, and I've got a lot of impressions. And just so you know, this footage is captured on PlayStation 5 version of the game and is spoiler free. I'm only showcasing like the first two main biomes or chapters of the game, and it's a fairly lengthy one. So just know that you're good. Also, in describing this game, I'm gonna be talking about this one mostly as if you're new to the franchise, as I assume many people might be. Uh, so, Tales of Arise is about the story and the characters, man. Like, if you're looking into diving into a story and a lore-rich JRPG world and adventure with party member friends that you get to know and eventually fall in love with along the way, this game will totally scratch that itch. Tells the story of two worlds. The world of Donna is essentially held prisoner by the world of Rena. Uh, Rena is drastically more technologically advanced and powerful, and they basically hold power over all of Dana's various different regions. Each one is drastically different, and each one is controlled by a different leader, who are all also vying for power. Each one of these regions is essentially enslaved or controlled or oppressed in various different ways, and the game generally has a theme that grapples with the distinct difference between these two races, the relationship and the division between them, and for the people of Donna to rise to freedom from this empire. Now, the main character from Donna, whose past is shrouded in mystery and amnesia, finds himself a slave, but he kicks ass, so he fights back, especially when he joins up with a mysterious woman from Rena named Xion on the run, who uh, not only has kind of cool magic abilities like many people in this world, but she holds an even more important, powerful flame power that only our hero actually has the ability to wield because he feels no pain, conveniently enough. And while his hands burn from this weapon, she can always heal him because of her powers. So they have to work together and forge an uneasy alliance that grows throughout the game. Now, I'm obviously like totally oversimplifying and kind of butchering a lot of the setup, you know? This type of stuff is best explained by the game. If you've ever played anything or watched anything or read anything anime, but like the way people's fantastical abilities work in this game are explained very well and have like a nice heady spin on them. And this alliance between the two main characters is interesting because of how it develops. It starts off really frosty because of the division between the two groups of people you know, oppressed and oppressor, so the game spends a lot of time talking about it. Dialogue is told through traditional cutscenes, storyboard style cutscenes, occasionally an animated cutscene, and just lots of good old fashioned text boxes. A lot of the conversations are actually thought provoking and intense, but there's so many of them, like the game just throws so much dialogue at you, characters will stop mid thing to debate slavery. It's Sometimes it's just hard to attach yourself to one theme or one point being made, but it's still does interesting things. Now, that being said, the adventure is still easy enough to follow. While it does occasionally find itself having some of the anime character tropes you've seen a million times with a million other characters before, the overall thing is very unique and interesting. The plot keeps you playing, and even if the dialogue is thick, the adventure is still easy enough to grasp, even if you don't play a lot of games in this genre. It is fairly accessible. But, you know, enough of that. Let's talk about the good old-fashioned gameplay. You venture your way across, like I said, multiple regions in this world. Uh, usually, they're laid out like a town or a hub area with an inn, a merchant, the ability to upgrade your weapons at a smith, and take on various side quests. You can leave these towns and venture out after a loading screen into straightforward, simple areas. And most of them aren't too big. You know, they actually, a lot of them feel pretty old school. There's usually the obvious path and a few shortcuts and hidden areas, and of course, roaming enemies. You can either avoid many of them or run up to them and the game loads you into a combat scenario. Now, all of this sounds like standard stuff, but the combat is really a ton of fun and it just gets better the more you put into the game. The combat is fairly active. You know, you can move around the battlefield freely and dodge enemies that attack you. You can do basic attacks like the typical three hit combo type of thing, and then also queue up 
these mapped special attacks. So you can string them in a row to make some, for some pretty dazzling stuff. Some special attacks can lift enemies up in the air uh, where you can then combo them using your regular attack and then drive them back down with one more special attack. You just need to all make sure that you're properly using what you have available to you because you are limited. And the, the more you shake up your queued attacks, the better you do. That's the basic gist of it, but it gets a bit more complicated as you go. Certain attacks, you can hold down a button for more effectiveness or to unleash your powerful supernatural flame attacks, which often hit your HP but end up being really effective. Uh, you'll unlock perfectly timed dodge bonuses and aerial dodges and a bunch of other stuff along the way that really kind of changes it up and makes it feel less just like you're a guy swinging a sword at a thing. Then of course you also have party members. You can technically play as them, but it's not always prioritized. Your party members can fight with you and buff you or heal you if they have the ability and you can set their AI preference uh, for some strategy as to how they fight. You can also manually trigger your party members when it's available to do cool special attacks. These usually have their own use cases and come off stylish and powerful and are always satisfying to execute in a pinch, even if it's just as simple as hitting a button on the D-pad. It's still great. Uh, then of course, if all the conditions are met, you can also do a big special attack with multiple team members that shifts camera angles and looks incredibly awesome and usually makes for a really good fit. Finish. Battles can get pretty intense, and while here in the early hours of the game you see here, it might not look like much with repetitive fodder enemies that are pretty dull. The more you get access to and the better you get the hang of it all, it can be truly satisfying. And it's really simple when it, you boil it down, but it still manages to be effective, especially with how it manages specifically, I love the aerial attacks. And when you tie that all in with some bigger battles and some pretty impressive boss fights, that's where the game is at its best. Completing quests, exploring, and defeating enemies nets you uh, money called gald or gold to spend in shops and also experience to level up. Uh, you can spend points and essentially group together clusters like skill tree type things. Uh, you get access to more of these clusters as you level up and progress and you can unlock new bonuses, higher damage or critical chance, stuff like that, along with different moves, you know, the Q moves. You can slot these moves into your mapped buttons and they go from just like a cool stab or a spinning attack to crazy stuff like big poison AOE effects, throwing rocks, major damage stuff. And along with that, you're finding weapons and accessories to strengthen you. And like I said earlier, you can upgrade these things. So using these along with items and attachments to your armor that give you more bonuses, there's just a fairly decent degree of customization. Uh, the big thing that people might really, I think, enjoy is that there are a lot of skins for the characters. Uh, they're like different outfits and different headstyles specifically, as well as hidden collectibles in the environments that you find with these weird owls that allow you to give your characters stuff like bunny ears, eye patches, glasses, tails, you name it. It also looks pretty damn good stylistically. You know, I, I love the art style here. Characters animate and speak well, they look cool as hell, and all the designs are pretty on point. Even if the environments aren't always technically these massive open worlds, they still manage to always feel awesome and have like a really good sense of scale, despite sometimes being a smaller footprint. I, I don't know exactly what to call the art style, but it sometimes looks a bit cell shaded, but also a bit of a watercolor texture effect, but without going too far either way, it just looks right. It's crisp and colorful. The cultures feel unique. The main enemies are cool to look at, even if the smaller guys are a little generic, but like uh, the towns, the backdrops, the vistas, the ships, the guns, the swords, the particle effects of all the abilities, the way the main character just gets cooler and cooler costumes and more badass the further the game goes, it all just looks great. Although I will say there is a really bad pop in I noticed with my version like characters pop into the scene like five feet in front of you sometimes that's just kind of weird. But my only other complaints, you know, the one being what I mentioned earlier, which is more personal and subjective with that sometimes the dialogue is just too much and that some of the side quests are just totally dull. But the real other thing is that I have with a lot of, you know, action RPGs and JRPGs and some regular traditional RPGs, the opening is slow and a bit more of a grind and it gets way better as you go. You just have to be willing to put a couple hours into it. As combat opens up, you get more companions and your moveset grows and the enemy types get a little cooler and the plot moves forward a bit more interestingly. Uh, that's when it's really good. It just takes a minute, but 
you still might be intrigued from the get-go. I don't know. That's just me, really. It, it's cool characters. It's an interesting world and fun combat. It's fairly accessible to get into, but a nice little bit of challenge here and there if you want it. There's a lot of game here to chew through. There's a lot of items. There's a lot of characters. There's a lot of side quests. There's a ton of dialogue. Oh, and some downright incredible music, which I think really is a cherry on top with a lot of games. I think if you're looking at this and you are typically a fan of these types of games or the Tales series, I give this a green light. This is a before you buy. You know how this goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, how it works, some personal opinion, and now I wanna hear yours down in the comments. If you've been looking forward to this game, definitely let us know. Uh, we, that would really help for our research purposes, but also, uh, what's your favorite in the Tales series? Maybe this is gonna be your first one. Let's talk anything Tales down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, all you gotta do, if it, if it helped you out, is click the like button. We'd really appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell, because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.